Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the third edition of online teachers training program by All India Education Movement and EduFam International. Today we are honored with the presence of a great educationist, a person who has spent almost all the years of her life in the field of education, in the field of learning and teaching, in the field of training and research. I'm talking about Madam Ashoka Bira. Madam Ashoka Bira is multidisciplinary NEP educator. She is a nation builder. She is the founder of Noble Palm School and Web School. It's an honor for us to have Madam Ashoka with us this afternoon. And I welcome each one of you present here. And Madam Ashoka, good afternoon, ma'am. And on behalf of AIEM and EduFam International, I welcome you. Good afternoon. How are you, ma'am? Ma I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, I was uh, also not having power here for 45 minutes. I was really wondering how I should join. And, uh, and it so happened that you at that end and I am we at this end uh, were uh, had to connect only after 45 minutes. So it's some plan like that. And okay, we are all together now again. I was just wondering how we can uh, do this webinar on another day or what. Uh, so it has happened that we could uh, not well, miss before we, before we begin our uh, formal session, I would request you if you can throw some light on your contributions. I know that you have spend uh, uh, like more than three decades in the field of education so if you can just highlight your contributions in the field of education your achievements your passion uh, we would be honored to listen to that yeah i'm based in hyderabad um, and i had all my education in hyderabad itself and uh, after um, completing um, bed training i had uh, joined a school locally and, and from then onwards, uh, continued in uh, uh, education field. And so I uh, worked for nearly 30 years um, in all the schools. Then uh, when I was uh, uh, going on to schools, job, doing uh, consultations, then I uh, have understood that um, there is something, uh, uh, there's something more to be done. So uh, when I was searching on the net, I found that um, 21st century skills are lacking in most of the schools. So I went to many schools to give uh, um, sessions and saying that this um, um, school uh, should not be in this mode. We have to put them into a tra some other training modes. So uh, I told them this traditional mode is, uh, has to be updated. When, when this was all happening, uh, um, I uh, visited many um, uh, 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 session, uh, visited many cities uh, where I had given uh, participated in conferences. I understood many things in those conferences also. Then I came to uh, establish my own school, and when I established my own school, I understood that teacher training was even more important. And it so happened that uh, the, uh, 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 when I visited uh, um, Europe um, for, to learn about Ma Ma Montessori and Frobel education and Regio Amelia education. And after visiting there, I've learned many things and came back to India and we had the lockdown. And ha we had the lockdown. It was even more uh, uh, good to con connect with people virtually conduct many webinars virtually. And uh, this is how a larger platforms have uh, happened and larger connections happened. So uh, earlier it was only in our own cities we were training teachers and meeting teachers and um, to go to a conference, we had to spend three, four days. But now morning to evening, we are able to do, connect with people, learn from people, um, uh, really good contributions we are able to make and we have completely changed and this new normal uh, is uh, uh, has uh, uh, um, uh, taken us from this VUCA world into a, um, a good 
an EP education um, um, to travel towards that. So uh, we are able to um, uh, what um, uh, able to uh, completely learn. Uh, not from uh, not this traditional uh, lesson, traditional uh, uh, presentations. We are completely able to transform ourselves into digital um, ways, and we are able to uh, what uh, uh, see everything in a new way and look at in a, in the twenty uh, first century or further stage stages also. So we are really scaled up for in this education. And uh, uh, I welcome all of you to uh, join to to travel this uh, new path. So that's my journey, and here I am uh, uh, to present uh, uh, a new topic here with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your journey is interesting, and your journey is quite exciting, and you are full of experiences acquiring knowledge, research, and we are honored to uh, attend a session by you. So ma'am, now over to you. If you want to uh, share your screen, you can do that now because you are the co-host. Am I sharing the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How do I make it uh, full screen? Just click right side, ma'am. It will up. Slide show. This one? Yeah. No, no, no. Right side up. It becomes full screen. Click on that. Right side and the top? Yeah, yeah. Still up. In more? More, more. Yeah. You have a cross, minus, and one box. No, click on that big one. This big box. Uh, speed box. You try with slide show also. Here you click, then it will be. Yeah, let me click slide show. Now it's perfect. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. Now my topic is application of uh, multiple intelligences to make classes more interactive and interesting. So um, we all have heard, I think, about being left-brained individuals and right-brained uh, persons. So, uh, and we also know that left-brained individuals excel in logic, mathematics, and linear thinking. And at the same time, right-brained people are more creative, more inclined to arts, and they adapt more to the holistic thinking. So this thoughts were from the theory who had um, won the Nobel Prize. Uh, his name is Roger Spiris, and his research was in uh, 1960s. And by 1980s, another theory emerged, and that was multiple intelligences by the well-known Howard Gardner, 
and he postulated that each individual has a capacity to learn from various subjects and in various ways. So this uh, Gardner uh, had come up with a theory by performing a cognitive research and it led to, uh, to seven specific intelligences. And it is based on different ways how his subjects acquired learning, used memory, performed and understood all the subjects, all the, all the uh, content in the uh, different, different subjects. So simply what we understand from multiple intelligences is that we learn holistically, but develop different capacities and intelligences. This we have to understand very well. What is uh, multiple intelligences? It is that we learn holistically and from different capacities and intelligences. We develop different capacities and intelligences. So what we understand is that everyone cannot learn the same material in the same way. And a uniform universal measure alone is not sufficient to test a student in the learning. So this is what is this theory is about in two um, points. Everyone cannot learn the same materials in the same way. And a uniform universal measure is not alone sufficient to test a student learning. So multiple uh, and at the same time, I would like to bring uh, about these learning styles that we often talk about. Multiple intelligences are not learning styles. Quote unquote, Howard Gardner, one unanticipated consequence has driven me to destruction. And that is the tendency of many people, including persons whom I cherish, to credit me with the notion of learning styles or to collapse multiple intelligences with learning styles. It's high time to relieve my pain and to set the record straight. This actually he, uh, Howard Gardner had written in his blog on October 16, 2030. So education field is crowded with different, different theories about learning styles and Howard Gardner says learning styles and multiple intelligences are entirely different. Not only is this learning styles of the students, we are also crowded with the theories which are about teaching styles also. So uh, now learning styles are there, but we have to prefer them to call them as learning preferences. So let's know about um, multiple intelligences and learning preferences. So multiple intelligences represent different intelligences, abilities and strengths, whereas learning styles are how an individual approaches a task. So learning styles are fluid and may not correlate, uh, correlate completely with the intelligence, intelligence types or the types. So learning preferences focus on how students process information using their senses to absorb and retain what is being taught, what is being taught. So learning style is a process used by the student to uh, uh, use the sense to absorb and retain what is being taught. So uh, it's something very much different from the multiple intelligences, what we have heard, what we know. While many people may say they have learning style, they really have a learning preference or the way they prefer to have the lessons delivered to them. So students actually learn, retain educational content when it is delivered to them or taught to them and in a variety of different ways. So now these are the different types of learning preferences we have to keep in mind when we are building an online school or a home school. Now online schools or home schools are happening and we are planning. So we have to know the different learning preferences. We have to keep in mind the learning preferences of the students. If your student is struggling with a difficult concept, 
You can also use these learning preferences as a guide to find a different way to deliver the learning content to help them make things click. For visual learners, for visual learners, their preference will be to be taught through images, graphs, maps, and drawings. Auditory learners, the students will prefer to learn by hearing and speaking new information. Tactile or kinesthetic learners, these students will prefer to learn by experiencing, touching, and performing tasks. So these are the ones what we have to keep in mind, learning preference. They are not completely learned visual learners. What they prefer to learn, how they prefer to learn. So their intelligence is intelligence. They will have all these multiple intelligences every time all through the um, uh, learning stages. Now, quickly, let's go through the different multiple intelligences. Now, people with lingu uh, linguistic intelligences will uh, express themselves and assign a meaning by uh, using language, by producing production and possibilities. That is, they, uh, uh, they, they can uh, tell stories, they have humor, they, have, they uh, read poetry or they listen to poetry, they use metaphors. We can see this uh, commonly in comedians, public speakers, and writers. So they learn best by writing. They practice speeches. They create jokes. They are very good in journalism. They are very good in reading. Now, how do we teach for these learners? We use these activities and techniques for the students or groups of people with high linguistic intelligences, they, uh, we have to use creative writing activities for them, such as poetry or script writing. We can use class debates. We allow formal speaking opportunities. We use humor, such as jokes and writing and uh, tell, uh, joke writing and telling. Uh, and also we make, uh, we can make uh, or sure to give them plenty of opportunities for reading. So you give them anything to read, they are very, very uh, happy to read. They uh, uh, re re read aloud, uh, can express their feelings. So, so these are the, um, uh, these are the ways we can teach to the linguistic learners. The logical mathematical intelligences, this is commonly taught, uh, thought to be a scientific thinking or the ability to reason, work with abstract symbols, recognize patterns, and see connections between separate pieces of information. It makes possible to go through the scientific processes of uh, calculating, quantifying, hypothesizing, and concluding. So how do we teach? We teach by providing opportunities for problem solving, involve calculations, create activities that involve disparing the code and use patterns or logic games. And we can organize new information. They can organize, we can ask them to organize new information in a just given an um, outlet, outline format. So this is uh, how we can teach them. And uh, the next intelligence is visual spatial intelligence. These are, uh, uh, all this is about visual arts, graphics and architecture. And this type of intelligence, people will uh, visualize objects in different, different uh, uh, perceptions and in different ways. They will use objects with space, within the space. They form mental uh, images and they have uh, think in the three dimensions. And uh, how do we teach for these people? We use, uh, we, uh, we, we give them mind mapping techniques. We will guide them, um, visual, we'll gui we use guided visualizations and verbal imagery. We provide opportunities for artistic expressions using a variety of mediums like painting or clay, modeling, or uh, uh, making uh, 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 three-dimensional models. And then we allow to give, uh, 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 make them, give them um, 
make believe or uh, we allow them to give them a uh, fantasy they fantasize anything so dramatize anything they create collages for vis uh, visual representations the next intelligence is bodily kinetic kinesthetic intelligences this is the ability here the ability of the it is the ability of the body to express emotions the play games they create uh, new products and it is commonly referred to as uh, uh, learning by doing this is how this is uh, visible in most of the uh, curriculum that we are having so these are dancers athletes surgeons artisans and they manipulate objects of the and and they manipulate the body parts also so you, they use body parts for uh, doing anything they use liberally they are able to uh, use uh, 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 every part of the body to um, parts uh, to make to participate in the activities uh, how do we teach we use uh, body sculpture role playing miming charade games and we allow uh, for physical exercise dance and martial arts we create opportunities for dramatic arts like skits and we can use human graph for that the musical intelligence this category of people have greater knowledge uh, and a sensitive soul rhythmic and uh, melody they have but this type of intelligence isn't about music it's about the sensitivity to human voice audio patterns and sounds of environment so how do we teach them that we use instruments we use instrument sounds and we use environmental sounds to illustrate a concept we use uh, we allow music compositions and we use um uh, performing they can uh, use any sound related patterns um in a, a, when they are musically intelligent and we allow students to create songs about Uh, certain topics that we give us a certain situations that we give then the next is interpersonal intelligence high interpersonal religion, uh, intelligences is found in uh, found in the groups of teachers counselors politicians and religious leaders this is about working with others communicating effectively with others both verbally and non verbally it involves the ability to notice distinctions in others moods temperaments intentions and motivations so how we are going to teach to to people with interpersonal intelligence we teach collaborative skills provide plenty of group work opportunities use person to person communication use empathy this is what we are doing in this webinars we are connecting with teachers we are giving them opportunities we have communication we have collaborative skills and we understand this and then we have to use this in the classrooms and using empathy is uh, uh, social emotional skills is even before the blooms uh, we have to do this uh, uh, for all the groups at home all the groups at uh, schools and all the teachers groups also and then naturalist intelligences it's about discerning comprehending appreciating plants and animals we we'll have to we we'll learn a lot about earth we it involves knowing how to care for animals life on uh, off the land classify species and understand the systems in the nature so people with this intelligence are the farmers zoo keepers bot botanists nature guides veterinarians cooks landscapers gardeners so how do we teach is by practicing conservation have a classroom plants and animals to take care of observe nature go on nature walks use species classifications and provide hands on labs of natural elements natural materials so multiple intelligences in the classroom how do we uh, have these intelligences in the classroom we learned about the seven intelligences but in a classroom how can we have all these intelligences how we have to cater to all the people uh, in, with these intelligences of the seven different intelligences that we have seen just now in the school we focus only two mostly 
the linguistics and the second one yes so uh, uh, the other five also have to be given a chance then the whole uh, uh, learning part will become successful so how can in multiple intelligences be implemented in the classroom is by setting up seven learning centers each dedicated to seven intelligences the students will spend uh, much of time how much ever time you can give maybe 15 to 20 minutes uh, could be given liberally so most of the uh, school day they spend in these centers and uh, uh, they move from one center to another center in the same topic and all the intel intelligences are uh, together completes the um, learning uh, session for the uh, children on that topics okay uh, some uh, examples how we can uh, uh, make this uh, activities in the classrooms are uh, one corner or one center is personal work center that is interpersonal intelligence here the students will uh, explore uh, present area of the study through research reflection and individual projects first this personal work center the students will have to go to personal work center their intrapersonal intelligence that is person the student or the learner will sit research everything reflect on what they have researched and then individually to perform some top uh, some research for themselves individually they uh, do some projects and then uh, gather some information learn something and keep it in mind next they go to working together center that is interpersonal intelligence they develop cooperative listening learning skills like solve solving the problems they answer questions they create learning games the brainstorm ideas will be there and then they discuss the topic the day's topic collaboratively then next they move to the music center musical intelligence so students will compose or they sing songs about the subject matter they make their own instruments they make uh, learning in a rhythmic ways then they move to the art center the special special intelligence they explore the subject thoroughly uh, using diverse art media manipulables puzzles charts and pictures then uh, they go to the next center that is the building center kinesthetic center intelligence there they build the models dramatize the events and all the ways that could be related to that subject matter then next they will go to the reading center verbal or linguistic intelligence so students will read write and learn many traditional in all the many, uh, traditional modes and then they analyze organize the information that they have uh, written uh, 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 that they have learned into a written form then the next go to the maths and the science center logical and mathematical intelligence they are the work with maths games manipulatives mathematical concepts scientific experiments and the deductive reasoning and problem solving so this is how we can set up the uh, multiple intelligence centers in the classroom so what did the students benefit let's see the students developed increased responsibility self direction and independence over the course of the year discipline problems were uh, significantly reduced uh, discipline problems were significantly reduced all the students developed and uh, applied new skills cooperative learning skills were improved and academic achievement also improved okay then what was the role of the teacher here and did the teacher achieve anything through this multiple intelligence centers program the teacher's role here is to observe the students from seven new perspectives in planning the centers the students were pushed from behind from behind by the teacher it's not pulling up for the students and asking them say and asking them some questions 
uh, and uh, 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 trying to understand what they have understood. Uh, teachers are working with them rather than working for the students. Teachers explored what the children, students have explored. The teachers discovered what the students have discovered and teachers learned what the children also have learned. So teachers have become explorers, discoverers, and learners. These, uh, the students, teachers were not doing in the traditional uh, way of teaching. Then teachers became very, very creative and multimodal in their own thinking and learning. Uh, here, I would uh, want you to watch this uh, video. Uh, here, the multiple intelligence theories have been specifically designed by language teaching, but they are cheerfully uh, welcomed in other fields also. So here, uh, uh, can we watch this more video? I think one up to uh, 59 seconds, we can watch this later on. We can uh, watch the, uh, copy this and watch. Is the video being played? Not yet. Yeah. In this video, I will give uh, practical ideas, examples of activities to address different learning styles and uh, different intelligences. Well, you will definitely uh, notice that the activities that I will use in this video as an example uh, are not mutually exclusive, but they every now and then may overlap. One activity that I may suggest for logical mathematical intelligence may also address the naturalistic intelligence, uh, depending on the content. Now, let's start with verbal linguistic intelligence. Brainstorming, riddles, anecdotes, jokes, crossword puzzles, Storytelling, story reading, debates, giving and listening to lectures, discussions, writings. Stories, uh, poems, journal keeping, verification. Uh, speaking activities, writing it. All of these can be used to address this intelligence. As you can see in this figure, uh, we have a crossword puzzle. If you want to use this crossword puzzle with young learners, it is a good idea to use pictures. Uh, but if you are working with older learners, you can always use the definitions of the words. We can also use a road hunt activity to address uh, verbal linguistic intelligence. In this activity, we, we have school related words. Logical mathematical intelligence. What are the activity types that we can use to address this intelligence? Like, can you stop this because we will. Uh, 
process. I think there is some network issue, so the voice is not very clear. Ma'am, you can uh, uh, you can paste the link in the chat box so that we can watch. Yes, yes. As per our own connection. So I stop sharing this now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, then. So um, to continue, uh, that link I will share in the chat box. Uh, so to continue, uh, a classroom layout, uh, how best we can do is um, for the linguistic intelligence, there should be a quiet room for um, quiet area for reading, writing and practicing speeches for logical mathematical intelligences. There should be an area where students can conduct science experiments for visual spatial intelligence, include an open area with object manipulation and art creation for bodily kinetic intelligences, open area for body movement could be provided. So depending upon the areas you have in your schools, you can uh, um, arrange like this. For musical intelligence, include a, spa a space where music listening and creating uh, perhaps a soundproof and uh, room uh, and headphones are available. And naturalistic intelligence is outdoor space, indoor aquarium, or a uh, 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 terrace, or open terrace gardens could be there. And uh, for interpersonal intelligence, you can have a large tables where group work could be done for intrapersonal, a quiet area for individual activities. Okay, so Howard Gardner uh, has um, uh, told, talked about his own theory at a conference, Blackboard's conference, the BB World 2016 conference. Here too, he has talked uh, uh, all about this uh, uh, Okay, then we have to He has explained a lot about the, uh, his intelligence, his theory. We'll just play a little bit. I'll just skip through. And where I want you to see, we will tell. Let's see here. Take a look at you, James. Now I said to the West, because if you go to intelligences that life's interesting, intelligences that life's interesting, no two people have exactly the same profile, though presumably identical twins have more similar profiles than fraternal twins, and fraternal twins have more similar profiles than randomly chosen people from the planet. There are a lot of people. Are you sharing something? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not hearing something. Some voice is coming, but there is no visual. Yeah. Okay. That allows us to be able to draw on different intelligences. So this comes from my colleague Randa Bondi, and she has uh, a I close that. Does with fifth graders, where they learn about different explorers. Um, they learn some slides of explorers. I don't know who they are, but people like they have learned about. I'm just about Fernando Cortez. 
and then you know, they you know, have about it. And then um, what Rhonda does. What was in that uh, uh, video I'm going to share now here. What Gardner was talking about was about uh, two educational claims. We should individualize teaching, learning, and assessing as much as possible. Whenever possible, we should pluralize, presenting important ideas in several ways. These are the two claims that he is making for in mul multiple intelligences to be successful or used completely in the process of learning. And uh, he's uh, also uh, talked about two scientific claims. We have all these intelligences to make us human, cognitively speaking, no two people, not even identical twins, have exactly the same profile of intelligence. So these two claims he has made, these are scientific, and we have to keep this in mind when we are talking about multiple intelligences or we are using multiple intelligences to, um, uh, to when we are practicing them in the classrooms. So now that we have these, all we know about all these intelligences and uh, we have to use them for good work, to have morals, values, to be human and to be uh, and to have gratitude. This is what uh, Howard Gardner is recommending. Why he is recommending is because he came up with an idea of having three components, the three E's, which are essential for a good worker, be it a, a doctor or a lawyer or an educator or an engineer or an accountant or a leader, anybody. We have to use three E's for these multiple intelligences to be utilized by anybody or engaged by anybody. These three, intel three E's are excellence, engagement, and ethics. Excellence, engagement, and ethics. Now, these three, he has uh, named it as ENA, just like DNA, which is double helix. ENA is having excellence, engagement, and ethics. So multiple intelligences, all these seven of them will be complete when we are uh, using the multiple intelligences for excellence of the person uh, in all the fields, engagement of the person, not just learning, excellent, ex excelling in everything, but we have to be engaged in, the, uh, uh, in whatever we are done and we have to use it in ethically with moral va values. So this is how he has proposed the triple helix, excellence, ethics, and engagement. So we should all be like professionals with whom we are involved to be excellent and engaged and ethical. So this, uh, uh, you can view all this in his videos. So I rest my uh, presentation for now. Hope uh, this has answered most of our uh, doubts of about the multiple intelligences. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, now the house is open for the question answer session. I request the teachers if they have any questions regarding multiple intelligence and how it has to be applied in the classroom teaching, you please either write your questions in the chat box or raise your hand so that you can be given access to speak. So my question to you is, Madam Ashoka, if you yes. permit me, so I can start with my own question. Yes. My question to you is that uh, there are certain intelligences that are useful in their career life in future. And while there are some intelligences, although we know this child is uh, intelligent in this way, like maybe naturalistic intelligence, or maybe if you can say that, uh, um, a special intelligence. So, 
a teacher how a teacher can guide that particular child to be to have a successful career in future life because mostly we focus on either linguistic parts or cognitive cognitive aspects so what how will you advise the teachers that how they have to cater the needs of these type of intelligences and how they have to guide them to be successful in the future life so we we have the knowledge of all this we have to engage the students in all the intelligences not just uh, the two intelligences where they are related to the textbooks or the curriculum so uh, uh, if the topic is taken then all the seven intelligence centers should be placed in the classrooms or in the school so they have to go to uh, first they have to go and sit in one place understand about what the uh, topic is given learn about it think about it then go and discuss with uh, 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 all the uh, groups that they which are in their class they have there are supposing there are uh, 40 children in the class 10 in a group or a, uh, or eight in a group could be formed and uh, they can all sit in groups so interpersonal skills and intrapersonal uh, intelligences could be uh, utilized then they can uh, go and uh, uh, do an art uh, 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 a drawing of it or a song of it or a music of it or some painting of it could be made by people different different uh, uh, um, groups so all of them will come together and uh, present it uh, to the whole of the class of the 40 children or 30 children and then they move to the other centers so so each topic uh, of the learning should be completed with all the intelligences so um, when they have learned everything then the children have learned uh, not just one intelligence they acquire all the intelligences or they use all the intelligences so um, the learning styles are again has to be taken uh, into consideration so if the children are uh, one particular child is in one learning style, style one learning preference then other children will be helping them to understand um uh, uh and and anything more you want to know uh, are you able to understand that because of cent centers are uh, established in the school uh, uh, all the intelligences will be uh, acquired by the children thank you very much i understand that we have to now like place the stations at different areas yes. where children can go yes. and engage themselves into different activities and those activities should like uh, enhance and develop that, that particular aspect of their uh, intelligence thank you very much for your answers and waiting for other questions otherwise then we will move the next segment of today's training program other question please let me know shida husain saheb aisha siddiqa saheb mohammad safi saheb nabiha aisha mrs reshma riya gosal riya gosai ahmed bibi fatima shabana kausar ipad any questions okay i think your uh, presentation was very clear ma'am and it was self elaboratory that's why they understood everything and uh, they they are not asking any questions because it was very clear and especially if you are going to share us the link those links are very useful because you know they are, they have given practical aspects of implementing the multiple intelligence theory in the class mm -hmm. this application really is difficult for the teachers otherwise theory part do they learn very easily yes But when we have to apply in the classroom when we are teaching math science english evs mm -hmm. then it is really difficult and those videos were quite helpful right right, right. so on behalf of aiem and on behalf of edufam international i would like to thank you madam ashoka and mm -hmm. i would like to thank all the participants who are here this afternoon and my dear teachers let me make a few announcements today because you know that our endeavor is that we always try to bring best innovation in the field of training in the field of coaching and one of the innovation is that uh, tomorrow we are going to award 20 top leaders in different fields not only in education but in different fields from different walks of life and from different nations here you can see the galaxy of people who are from singapore who are from malaysia indonesia india uae usa uk kuwait and all these leaders great leaders are going to be awarded 
and they are going to share their experiences with us that how they became such great leaders. I request each one of you kindly attend this program to be benefited. It's free. There is no fees involved in this. It's a free program and please attend it tomorrow at 10 o'clock and meet all the world renowned leaders. They are going to share their personal stories with us that how they achieved it, their great success in their lives. Now, next is that on the same occasion, we are going to inaugurate the fourth batch of leadership challenge. Teachers, you are a born leader, whether you accept it or you not accept it. The only thing is that you have to enhance the leadership qualities. And for that, EduFam is here with a great challenge of leadership challenge. For one month, you have to prove that yes, you are a leader and you can take initiatives whenever there is any need of the hour. So if you want to be the part of this fourth leadership challenge, please join us. You have to uh, show your interest right in the chat box that you are interested. I will share the contact details. You can contact on that number and then you will be the part of this one month challenge starting from April 10th to May 10th. And there are only 20 slots available. And then please make a, a quick decisions and you will get e-certificates for live master classes, panel discussion, one month leadership challenge, come training one-to-one -one with the expert, physical, mental, and emotional training, and talk show on the channel Jahaneman and educational YouTube channel. Now, as we all know, the children are so happy and excited because they are back to school. But what will happen then after one month, again, they are, there is going to be a vacation summer vacation, that is long vacation. They are going to be bored. They are going to feel uh, very lethargic. What to do? For that reason, we are bringing a wonderful, exciting, engaging summer leadership camp for the students. Because leadership starts not only when we are in the professional life, but when we are as small as nine months old child. From that age, leadership trait starts. From that age, we, are, we are start taking the initiatives in life. And that is the quality of leadership. So this leadership camp is for one month. And there are three badges available, keeping in mind the different difference in the summer vacation in different nation, different states. So first batch will start on 5th May till 5th June. Second is 6th June to 6th July and 3rd is 7th July to 7th August. These are summer camps for the school students. Please convey the message to the children because I have received many messages from the children. They feel bored during the vacation and they want to attend something. And remember that all these are online classes. All these are online classes. So please uh, ensure that you must enroll in this or your children are enrolling in a large number. I'm going to take these classes. I will be the main course leader along with my two co-leaders, Dr. B. Ramanathan from Singapore and Mrs. Rihana Abdullah from Singapore. These two are the trained master coaches and they are going to be with me. So thank you very much. Now I'm going to share my contact details on the screen so that you can WhatsApp me if you are interested. There are two, two courses I'm offering you on behalf of EduFam. One is for the leaders, for the teachers, and the other is for the students. And this is my contact number, 8527118529. And for the students, you think that it is just almost free because we have kept the fees just to make them regular, just to make them realize that this is a paid course and they have paid for it. So the children should feel that they have to attend every day, 15 minutes morning, 15 minutes evening, and on Sundays, one hour master class. You know, the, the, the fee of this course is even less than their one snack outside in Pizza Hut or in McDonald. It is so less uh, for the students. But for the professionals, yes, it is a reasonable fees. You can join if you want to join 30 days challenge. And if you just want to listen to the great leaders, then it is free. You can participate tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I have already shared my number. If there is any queries, you please go ahead and ask me the questions on these queries.